Hello. Hey, how's it going? Going, uh, going well. How, how are you? I'm good. Where, where do you live? Good. I'm, um, I'm, I actually just closed on a house. That's kind of why I was running a little bit late. We had oh, to get no worries. Figured out for the house, but um, we're in uh, Fort Pierce, Florida. Oh, cool. So, along the Treasure Coast, yeah. So. That's cool. Well, congratulations, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. I know we had to reschedule yesterday, but uh, appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hope every, I hope no everybody, in your, hope everybody in your family is safe and healthy. Uh, you know, as we uh, this this crazy, crazy twenty twenty year. I it's a year that I think we will all never forget. Um, and uh, hopefully, things kind of get turned around here for the better. So, um, why don't we just dive right into it? You know, where you grew up and and what kind of softball you know, meant to you at an early age? And did you always f love softball or was it any other sports growing up? I was every sport growing up. Um, for me, I grew up in a small town in Alabama, um, Morris. There were maybe 2,000 people that lived there at the time. It's still a very small town. Um, we have one caution light um, or one stoplight, I should say, and two caution lights, one gas station. Um, and we just got a subway not too long ago. And that's oh, wow. pretty much it. <laughs> so, um there really wasn't much to do when I was growing up other than to go outside and play. And that's kind of how my whole childhood went. I have two younger brothers that um, I fought every single day with and competed every single day <laughs> with. Um, and my dad was a, a, a high school baseball coach. Okay. So every day after practice, he would come home and um, play with us. And it, it didn't matter what it was, football, basketball, um, baseball, softball soccer um whatever we were always outside playing um and that's that was my entire childhood i got into um i played basketball and softball all the way through um my senior year of high school and then um ended up deciding to go with softball to play in college just because um that fit my frame a little bit better i stopped growing <laughs> <laughs> really have a future in basketball I don't think um but basketball was actually my first love um I was a point guard and um absolutely loved loved basketball and it was really hard for me to give up but um I think softball worked out okay and yeah uh, I think you I think you made the right choice yeah I definitely did <laughs> so did you play did you I know that did you always play softball at a young age or did you play baseball and then did you shift towards softball how did that how did that work out I always played softball okay. um from the time I was five, yeah, and um, it was actually, I had, you know, kind of barely missed that cutoff. Um, organized mm -hmm. softball was really just starting to get into um, the grassroots areas of small town Alabama, so, um, I mean, that was, you know, right before, I want to say it was like 1999, 2000, when that was going on, so um, I got really lucky. I played softball the, the entire way through, um, but I, I feel like I played t-ball like a like you would expect a little boy to play t-ball. <laughs> like, I took it very seriously and um, really never looked back after that. Oh, that's cool. So also growing up, did you, was there, were there any club teams for softball or how did that whole recruitment process work? Because nowadays you hear people, I, you know, they're committing when they're in eighth grade, ninth grade. What, what, what grade did you commit and was club softball kind of coming onto the scene or was it really not a thing when you were playing softball? Uh, club softball was definitely a thing. Um, it wasn't a thing for me until um, I was in seventh, eighth grade. Okay. Uh, I kind of stayed pretty local until then. Um, I actually played AAU basketball for quite some time. Um, That's been around forever, AAU basketball. Yeah. It seems like, yeah, club, the club baseball and club softball seems like it, it's really only kind of a, a decade to maybe 15 year, years thing, so. Totally, yeah. And I was, I was in the AAU culture for uh, – quite a while um really trying to hold on to the dream of you know I wanted to go to Tennessee and play basketball for Pat Summit that was like mm. what I wanted to do um and I loved it I absolutely loved it and then um like I said stopped growing and then <laughs> um got actually linked up with a girl that was on my high school or my middle school team at that time her dad ran a travel ball organization in Birmingham mm. about 20 30 minutes um from where we were at and um, I just got linked up with him. I started really getting into the club softball scene. Um, it's nowhere near what it what it is now, I don't think, when I was playing. But we got to go to some pretty cool places. I mean, Colorado, we went out to California and played a few times. Um, my recruiting process was – it was based in that club setting, but I, I think 
me being on a really good high school team, we were able to win um, a few state championships while oh, I was that's in cool. high school. And um, being local, um, I think one of the things that Coach Murphy does really well at Alabama is he keeps local talent there. Mm. He keeps them in the state. Um, and I, I think I was just one of those um, – local kids that he saw something that he liked and he saw some potential there. Um, and I'm really glad that he did because it ended up being the best decision of my life. And um, I, I started going on um, visits here and there and chatting with them um, around my freshman year and then ended up committing my sophomore year, which was late. Yeah. Because that, that was the age of, you know, early recruiting and like all of that fun stuff. And I, I, I'm, I was third out of four in, in our class. Third out of four. So. Third out of four. Okay. So also, um, so you like for, you live in Alabama, right? Like, so was that like, did you grow up an Alabama fan or were you like, it seems like, I don't know, like, cause I'm in the Northeast, but I just see it on TV. It's like the, the Alabama and Auburn rivalries. Like, I mean, it, it could break up families. So like, what was that? Uh, did you grow up an Alabama fan? My whole family was um, all Alabama fans. Okay. Up, uh, my parents grew up in the Bear Bryant era, so everything was Alabama football all the time. Um, my dream was to go play basketball at Tennessee. At uh, Tennessee, yeah. So, so I actually liked Tennessee. Like, my love for <laughs> basketball and, um, and Pat Summit and Candace Parker and, like, all of these just awesome role models that I had yeah. in my life, like, flooded me to Tennessee, mm. uh, which to – my grandfather, God rest his soul, was so upset about, he asked my mom, <laughs> he was like, what did you do to her? Why, <laughs> how does she not like Alabama? I don't understand. Um, and it's, it's really just because I loved basketball, loved Pat Summit. And um, yeah, I, I ended up going on a visit there to Tennessee um, with Ralph and Karen Weekly. Absolutely loved it. Um, mm. They have an incredible program. But some, something just clicked when I went on campus at Alabama. I mean, um, I was there. My whole family was so excited. And um, how close do you live to Alabama? Like where you grew up to? Where? How far is that? Forty-five minutes. Oh, okay. That's yeah, so your parents so, were probably at every ga home game, right? The whole family was at it. Yeah. Yep. So, and that was one of the big things when I was going through that recruiting process was I want my family to um, be able to take a day trip here. Yeah. Um, I want to be far. I want to go like away from home, but I don't want want it to be too far you know I want to have my freedom but I still want to see family whenever I want and um, I don't want to miss my brothers grow up that was a really big thing for me and Alabama ended up being the perfect 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 fit yeah and so your your years at Al Alabama like how would you rate your experience was it like just an A plus experience all the way through I mean what were what were some of the highs of going to Alabama I know that you know one of the teams obviously uh, went pretty far as far as from the in the college world series uh, and what are some of your low points in Alabama and, and how did you deal with kind of getting out of those low points? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, having the opportunity to play as a hometown kid at a hometown school was mm. um, incredible. Um, I didn't quite realize the platform that I was going to get in the local, you know, state community, but um, that that part of being an Alabama softball player to be able to say that like you're literally a celebrity for four years mm. um, is absolutely wild and crazy. Um, you know, kids coming up to you after um, games in the parking lot and, you know, following you to your car to try to get, <laughs> you know, to try to get signatures and pictures. And um, they love, love softball in the state of Alabama. They love their college sports period. But to be able to be in a position um, as a role model for young women um, was really important to me because I had that. Um, I had that with the Pat Summit in Tennessee program. Like That's who I looked up to. That's who I idolized. That's who I wanted to be like. And I became that for softball players in the state of Alabama. Um, and it was right around the time, too, that this transition from a West Coast domination in softball yeah. was starting to leak into the SEC. Alabama mm. had won the national Alabama's first SEC school to win the national championship in 2012. Yeah. I got there in 2013. So all of a sudden you're seeing like little girls are getting the chance to see like this is possible. I can grow up in a small town. I can stay local. I, I don't have to go to the West Coast. I can mm. be here. 
year, I can play for the team that I grew up idolizing and I can compete for a national championship. And that's exactly what I did. Um, that was the, that was the coolest thing ever. And it's, it still is. Um, even when I go home now, I'll see somebody at Target or <laughs> whatever. And it's like, Oh my God, like, Hey, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nice to see you. How are you? Like, it's just, <laughs> it's incredible. And I'm, I think there's a downside to that too, because as a young woman, you know, I'm 18, 19, 20 mm. years old and I'm dealing with that pressure, mm. right. Of wanting to be a role model to every person that I come in contact with, but also wanting to be a normal college student and have that freedom. So there was, um, there were times where like, it was just exhausting. I, mm, I hear you. And you just, you have all of these um, people paying attention to you constantly. And it's, um, sometimes it can be difficult to um, kind of separate your life as a student from your life as an athlete. Um, and you crave that normalcy a lot. Um, but for me, it was just a perspective change of like, I, I, I get to be in this position. Like mm. anyone, anyone that looks up to me or looks up to any of the women on my team, like would kill to be in my shoes. That's true. So yeah. I need to live my life like through that lens and still try to make a difference in any, in any way possible. Well, you did pretty good. I mean, in your four years there, I think you hit four, over 400, I mean, in the high 400s in, in those four years. What is your, your, like, hitting approach? Like, not to give any secrets away, but, like, what is some of the secrets of your, your kind of, like, hitting approach? And what, what type of mentality do you go up there with? Because, I mean, hitting that, that batting average is pretty impressive. And, and to do it consistently for four years, it's not like a fluky thing where like, oh, I did it my junior year. But, you know, you look at the other years, it's like you were consistently in that 400s every single year. What's your approach? Um, my philosophy, not only in hitting, but in everything sport related and really life related is less is more. So mm. anytime that I can, um, make something that I'm taught in a complex way, I can transform it into a more simple way of thinking. That's the approach that I will take. I don't like um, video. I don't like um, data. I don't like You're um, old school. numbers. I am. I'm old school. <laughs> um, and, you know, maybe that was, I, I think that's a byproduct of my childhood and the way that I was brought up because um, I didn't go to lessons. I didn't go to camps. Mm. I didn't, um, I didn't do any of that stuff. I didn't know what exit velocity was. And <laughs> I didn't care. I was in the backyard playing with my brothers and I was trying to get the barrel to the ball. Mm. So that's where kind of my, um, comfort and confidence level is. Um, and through that, through my development process, I ended up developing like really good hand eye coordination so my swing is really just, um, if you watch it, it, it doesn't really photograph well. It's not very orthodox. But what I, what I think helps me a lot is just being able to see something and react. Mm -hmm. See something and react. Like get my barrel where it needs to go. Um, and I, I, I'm quick. So yeah, absolutely. I, can, I, can have that, I can have that sort of approach and, and it works for me. Now, I... I want to like clarify that just because that works for me doesn't mean it works for everyone. Mm, that's uh, and there was like a self-reflection process for me while I was at Alabama because, um, you know, college softball is really big into video and watching film. And um, if it's preached to you that that's what working hard looks like, then, you know, I I've got to watch film. I've got to, you know, get this launch angle or match these data points, whatever. Um, I had to kind of learn that that might not be for me and that might not be what defines my work ethic. Mm. For me, my work ethic was more defined as how simple can I make my approach? How can I get something to click? How many reps can I get in that day? It wasn't, I need to watch all of this film because all of that analysis like literally paralyzed me and my mm. mind and my thinking. Um, and then once I, once I realized and was comfortable and vulnerable, vulnerable enough to admit that that did not work for me, everything changed. I'm sure there's people on the team that were all they had to do that, you know, what worked for you didn't work for them. They were like glued to the, the video. I'm sure that that, that had to be the case. 
absolutely. Absolutely was the case. Um, and it was, it was, it was just a case by case basis. Yeah. I think what was really, really good for, um, coaches not only our coaches but coaches at even like my high school level to see, what was good for them to see was that you can be successful without you can still be old school and be yeah, successful. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need all of this data maybe pick a couple of things out that you can work on in an efficient way but you have to know how your player learns and what their approach is before you can try to implement kind of all of this stuff like technology yeah. is both a blessing and a curse and yeah a curse. absolutely yeah and i'm 20 i mean i'm 25 years old right now and i'm probably one of the most technologically inept millennials <laughs> and i I'm, I'm okay with that like i'm okay with being a little old school some people might not be but you have to figure out through conversation and listening and all of that stuff who that who that player really is and what their best course of action might be yeah, I usually say technology is great till uh, till it do it's not until it doesn't work. You know, it's great when when it works, but when it doesn't work, it's a problem. It's it blame right. everything on technology. So that's usually yeah. what I say. So what did you what did you major in at Alabama? You know, because you go there obviously softball in mind, but I don't know if your thought process speaking to other softball players. I don't know if your plan is like I'm going to be a professional softball player or what's your plan going to college? Like get an education and do what? What's your next move? Yeah, I um, I never once thought about being a professional softball player. Mm -hmm. uh, that never crossed my mind when I was younger. I thought I was going to get a really good four years, and that was going to be it. Um, and I went into college wanting to um, open my own business where we have a weight room um, that we train high school athletes at um, privately. Um, so I wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach. And then on the other side of this facility that I wanted to open up would be um, all academic test prep tutors um, and people just come in and it's like a um, athlete center, but for high school kids, that, that was what I wanted to do. Um, it's still something that I want to do eventually. Um, so I wanted to get my degree in exercise science and human performance so I could take care of the, the strength and conditioning side. So that's what I ended up pursuing. Um, and I knew right away that was what I wanted to do. Um, it was an incredible program, learned so much. Um, my brother actually, he played baseball at Alabama. This was his oh, wow. um, senior year and he's, he's graduated oh. with a degree in exercise science also. So maybe we can work together in the, in the building once we open it up, but. Did yeah. you have any, I mean, not to go off topic, but what, any advice for him? I mean, he must've been heartbroken at, with this year, right? A senior this year. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was upset. Um, you know, I mean, you work so hard for something. Yeah. Like you, this is something that no one saw coming. Nobody. Um, yeah. And it was, it was a hard decision for him. He decided not to come back to use his, his extra year of eligibility, uh, mainly because he, he's ready to move on with his life. And, um, you know, he's graduating and he wants to kind of be in the real world. He's ready to take that next step. And um, I'm really proud of him for making that decision because it could have been easy just to say, you know, well, I have it. I might as well use it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to, um, I'm ready to be an adult. Like I'm ready to kind of take my next step in my life. So that was, it was a cool moment as an older sister for me to watch him go through that. Um, but yeah, he's he's excited about his future. He's applying for internships, and um, I'm trying to get him to move down to Florida. But we'll see. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, um, so after obviously college, like your involvement, you know, pro softball, Team USA. How does that come about? And was it like kind of like, oh yeah, sure, I'll, I'll keep playing softball. I did well enough in college that it made sense to go to that next level. Yeah, but that's basically what it was for me. Um, <laughs> I went through um, I went through the recruiting process and. Um, they were they were forming a junior national team yeah. um, in 2013 after um, it was after my freshman year of college, and I'm sitting in my dorm room one day, you know, like eating like spaghettios or something like that a college freshman does, <laughs> and I get this email and it's um, you've been asked to join the junior national team. Are you interested? And I sent it to Murphy. I sent it to Coach Murphy, and I was like, Hey, is this spam? <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> like yo like what what is his deal and he was like no that's real you need to reply to it and you need to do it um so I did and well another one of my um people in my class Andrea Hawkins she was also yes, on that junior yeah. national team um so that's how I kind of got into the USA program um I ended up playing 
decently well at the international level, at the junior level. Um, so they asked me the following year in 2014 to come to, um, I call it the big girl team tryouts, um, but the women's national team tryouts. Um, had a had a good tryout, got picked. I don't really know what happened. It was kind of all <laughs> Um, and it was after my sophomore year at Alabama. So, um, I'm kind of starting to see a little bit of success at the college level, but, um, internationally it was still like all brand new. I mean, it was a whole different level of softball that, um, I really never even knew existed. Yeah. What are some differences between like your college and then that international, like what are some things you saw looking back on it that are different? I, the best way that I can describe it is a, like, um, a double A to the majors. Mm, okay. That's, that's how I would describe it because you're looking at um, in college, it's just like, you're still, everyone's still going through that developmental process. Everyone um, for the most part either gets better or worse over their four years. Um, and you just kind of know what to expect. Mm. Um with international ball, what's so different is you're not only competing against different cultures, but the maturity level is on a completely, like, it's in a completely different realm. I'm competing now as a, like, I was 19 at the yeah. time. I got picked for the national team. I was competing against 34 and 35 year olds <laughs> that, like, did this for a living. Mm. And I'm literally still eating SpaghettiOs in my dorm room. <laughs> like, they, it's completely different. So you, you learn and you are exposed to all of these different professional approaches that you don't, you're not necessarily exposed to at the college level because you're still a student athlete. You're a kid, you're a baby, yeah. you know, this, it's not my livelihood. I'm just trying to get my degree and chill and like be a normal college kid. Um, so that, I think that was the the biggest difference. And then just the, the talent level I think is, is absolutely off the charts yeah you're seeing a pitching every single like game every single at bat where you know maybe in college you're not seeing that same you know you, you have your big time pitchers that you know are coming up but like sometimes you might not not be facing like a great pitcher right exactly yeah I think yeah. in international ball every day is a game at the women's college world series that, like you're that's playing great, yeah. college world series level teams that's the best way I can I can describe it so Team USA, obviously, you know, you probably the excitement when, uh, you know, the Olympics were – softball got reintroduced to the Olympics and, and, and gearing up for this year, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of obviously a little bit more bittersweet because of what went on. But, I mean, just training for that kind of like – that's a full – that's – I mean, anybody listening, watching this, that's a full-time job, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it should be anyway. So <laughs> I was um, – I spent the last two years while trying to prepare for the Olympic tryouts as a um, full-time division one strength and conditioning coach. Yes. Yeah. And so I was, I, I told everyone that I had two full-time jobs. <laughs> um, so my day would start, I was in charge of eight teams at, at FAMU in Tallahassee. My day would start with a softball lift at 6 AM where I would coach them through that. My day would end with a baseball lift. Um, at 6 p.m. Wow. So I'm working a tw I'm working for 12 hours. I'm yeah. getting teams in and out through the weight room, running their workouts, running their lifts, making sure they're, you know, healthy, strong, whatever, doing all of that that comes with being like a division one coach. And then, you know, from 6 to 10 p.m. was basically my time to train, lift, hit, throw, like all of that normal stuff that goes into the preparation process for a tryout like that. Um, and then I would wake up at four thirty the next day and do it all over again. I did that for two years. Um, wow. and it was insane. It was insanely crazy, but as, I mean, as a female athlete, that's nothing we aren't used to. We have yeah, to have, yeah. jobs. we have to have jobs to support ourselves playing a sport. So, um, it, I'm thankful for it because it made me better. It constantly gave me perspective and my athletes at FAMU were, hands down some of the best support that I had throughout that entire process. I mean, the softball team threw me a party when I was named to the Olympic roster like, <laughs> party after one of our lifts. So um, it, it was a really, really cool experience for me. And, um, you know, people ask, ask that question all the time. Like, what was, what was that training process like? Were you just like grinding like every <laughs> single hour? I was like, yeah, but not in the way you think. 
I was, I was working a full-time job on top of doing everything that Olympic athlete is supposed to do. That's uh that's a crazy schedule. I mean, has there been any, you know, have you had, had any desire to, you know, go play professional softball in a different country? I don't know if you've done anything like that. I know that some people do that right after college. Was that ever something to do or have you ever done anything like that? I haven't. Um, I, I've been asked to by a yeah, few I'm sure. overseas, but um, for me, I wanted to, um, I just, I wanted to be in the States. I wanted, um, I wanted to. Is it also to you're doing, yeah, the strength and conditioning? Is that like kind of obviously the, you know, hey, the softball, this career won't last forever, but, you know, kind of being set up for next. Yeah, I don't, I'll let you take over. I don't want to kind of. No, no, that's, no, that's exactly, <laughs> no, that's exactly right. I, um, I, I want to have something outside of softball that I can yeah. rely on and be once my okay. softball career is over. I'm a big advocate for having an identity outside of your sport. So I never want softball to consume me 24 mm. hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I love softball a lot. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not married to it. And I am, there are plenty of more characteristics outside of softball um, for me. So um, yeah, I, I just, and that's my, that's my personal viewpoint. Um, I, I want to be a strength coach. I want to spend time with my family when I want. I don't want to live overseas for six to eight months. Yeah. Um, that's... Need to focus on softball. I would rather just, you know, be here, be relatively normal and train to go play international softball in the summer. Awesome. Is the goal for, with the strength and conditioning to kind of open your, your own place like you, you talked about, whether your brother's involved or what, or is it to do it with a, a college or to do it with a pro team? What, what's the kind of, what's your, I know that there's going to be, dip, what's the end goal? Like, I know it's tough to, to say right now, but where do you see yourself kind of maybe in 10 years with the strength and conditioning? Yeah, I think I would like to open my own place still. I think, um, I mean, I had that dream when I was probably 15. That, yeah. That's what I to do um it hasn't really left my mind um there have been a little bit of like detours along the way um obviously I took the, the job at Florida A&M and um I didn't really plan to play softball for this long so <laughs> <laughs> I'm here I'm hanging out I'm chilling I'm still trying to manage all of that and uh you know I mean we'll see I, I think hopefully in 10 years you'll see um, me and my two brothers running a place wherever in the world we end up and um, that would be, that would probably be the, the high life for me. That's, that's awesome. Well, um, I'm sure that, you know, due to everything that's gone on in the world this year in 2020, you know, next year, hopefully the Olympics get in, hopefully, you know, you guys go there, you kick some butt. Um, if they make a movie about the whole thing, what actress is going to play you in the movie? Oh, this is such a good question. Yeah. I, every, I've had some other, I, I'll tell you. So, I had uh, Kalani was on, and she said uh, the the dude that uh, plays uh, Napoleon Dynamite would play her. So <laughs> I, that was that was that was different. I'm trying to think who else. Uh, uh, somebody else said uh, I, I forget, but but there's been a bunch. Let's see. Man, who would I want to play me? Reese, I think Reese Witherspoon. Okay, nobody said that. I know that for sure. So I would love that. That would be really cool. It's setting up that that would be like, I mean, it would be almost like somebody should make a movie if you guys go there and I'm expecting you guys to really kick some butt, win the gold and, and obviously what happened this year and, and just the journey and softball being out of the Olympics, it seemed like the perfect storm for a movie. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's so funny to um, kind of hear other Olympic um, athletes reaction to it being delayed, you know, for a year um for softball it's a little bit different we haven't been, been delayed for yeah we've been waiting for 12 yeah and now it's going to become 13 and so um our sport it's it's interesting because i think our perspective is just so different from from other sports out there it's like we have consistently been knocked down we have consistently been you know taken out and um maybe have our value as a sport questioned Mm. more often than others um and yet we keep getting back up we keep fighting we keep winning we keep competing and um i, I think it's going to be a really good opportunity for um the entire world to get to see that when softball gets to be back on that stage in 2021 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Softball is definitely going like this as far as the other sports go. It's definitely a growth sport. And, uh, you know, I think if, uh, you know, somebody, you know, that uh, could come up with like a professional league or something like that, that would be, you know, I know that the professional league is a very competitive league, but if they could just add obviously more teams and like you said, like you go to Alabama, which is like, I mean, you know, one of the highest schools for softball. And in your mind, you're like, I don't even think I want to play like professional softball. Like how do they change that mindset for um, this, the college softball player to think like, yeah, I want to go pro after like, how does that change? Do you have any ideas? I, you know, I, I don't. Cause it's not just you. It's not just you. It's, it's a lot of people that like every soft, like, no, that was never even kind of a thought process. Cause like, yeah, the professional league is competitive, but it's just not what, major league baseball is or these other professional right. sports so right i in in my opinion it, it's just it just needs to be um normalized and supported and funded yeah um and it needs to be marketed really well there are some brilliant people out there um that are doing really incredible things right now to try to um make professional softball a little bit more modern in the way that we think to appeal to um not only like millennials but um you know, even the older generation too, because with us, um, at Alabama, the majority of our fans were actually like, um, older, (laughs) they weren't like little girls, um, and their parents that we had a lot of like grandparent type of figures and fans and boosters and people that absolutely adored us. And so I think our plan of action becomes how do we reach not only those diehards of a particular school, um, or maybe a particular player, maybe it becomes a little bit more individualistic now because when I mean, you look at um, how many Laker fans are Laker fans now because of LeBron that were yeah. Cavs, fans, you know, a few years ago or a Heat fan before that. It's I think the the way that pro sports is starting to go is more of that like almost like a fantasy type of thing where like we follow really individual players. So then I think that's how you capitalize on people supporting the league as a whole, because what that does is, Oh, Haley went to Alabama. I'm a huge Alabama fan. I'm going to support yeah. Haley in this endeavor. I'm going to support, I'm a huge Florida fan. I'm going to support Kelsey Stewart and Aubrey Monroe at this, you know, in this endeavor, whatever it is. Um, and then if we can get the funding, like I would love to see major league baseball come on board. Yeah. And, yeah have a similar partnership that the NBA has with the WNBA. Mm. I would love to see that. I don't know what the logistics of that will look like. I have no idea. Um, that's just a complete player perspective. Um, now, Major League Baseball did partner with USA Softball. They were the presenting sponsor of our Stand Beside Her Tour, which I think is a huge step in the right direction um, for us to have the platform to play softball and have it be normal Yeah. To play professional softball after college. Um, but we'll see. I, th- I think there's a lot of brilliant minds out there. A lot of people that are a lot, hell of a lot smarter than me, um, that are in charge of it, which is nice. Um, my, my dream is to allow women to literally their only one concern is softball. Mm. They're uh, like, they're not worried about anything else their finances are taken care of. They've had people in their corner to represent them. Um, Just like the male sports do. We unfortunately don't have that yet, Mm. but I think we're taking steps to get there. But that, I think that's what the end goal looks like for us to only have to worry about ball and competing. That that's your full-time job that like you're playing. Yeah, absolutely. And the sport is like, you know, an eight month or however long it is, you know, and then obviously the off season and then a season. So yeah, that's uh that's a great point. Um, I, I, I agree. It needs to, somebody needs to do it. Um, I'm sure it's coming in the next, next 10 years. I, I feel like that something's going to uh, happen. I think the Olympics, it being back in the Olympics really helps kind of the, the stage for, it. and I thought this year it was unfortunate, uh, but I'm, I'm sure next year it will definitely take center stage. So. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. We just have another year to build up steam. That's all it is. Yeah, so I also saw the reason why I reached out to you. I what like are you involved in Wilson Sporting Goods like glove deal or I know that you were on their like live feed. Is there any involvement in in Wilson or Louisville? I I don't know if you, you use their products. I'm actually with Easton. So Easton. Um, okay, 
to, I, yep, I, they provide me, they are so awesome, man. They provide me, um, all my bats, all my gloves, um, some really cool gear. Um, I've been so you're swinging. You're a, a brand ambassador for Easton or, yes. or just, okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, they give, I mean, what they've been able to do as far as their ghost line of bats yes, yes. Is, is absolutely off the charts. And the international one is like even better. <laughs> um, it's amazing. I've been swinging East in my entire life, my entire career. Um, Alabama, Alabama is an Eastern school. Yeah, yep. Alabama was an Eastern school. Um, so I just maintained those contacts that, that I formed while I was at Alabama. And then once I turned pro, it, it was an easy fit for me. Um, and I absolutely love them. Great people. Awesome. So if anybody's listening, watching this later on, look at Easton. It's, Easton. you know, it's yeah. Life is the best life. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I appreciate you joining me um, and, and appreciate the reschedule and uh, we'll be taking a look and uh, we're in the Northeast. So if you're ever in the New York, New Jersey area under like normal circumstances in a new world where things are kind of a little bit safer, stop in. I'd, I'd love to meet you face to face, but you know, good luck in the strength and conditioning stuff. Good luck at the Olympics and, and just stay safe and healthy to you and your family out there. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'll definitely take you up on that offer. <laughs> All right. Be good. Thanks.